Okay, good afternoon. If I could get everyone to stand for the invocation, which will be led by Reverend Shannon and then followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, let us pray. Father, we just thank you for allowing us another opportunity to come to make a difference in somebody's lives. We pray for the school board. We pray, God, for our superintendent. We pray, God, for our teachers. We pray, God, for our students. We pray, God, for all the paraprofessionals. We pray, God, for the parents, and we pray for the students. We pray that you break everything that will hinder the unity in working together to make our school system positive, productive, proficient, in spite of the differences, because the students are the next generation of leaders called to impact family, community, region, state, and nation. We come against every plot, plan, ploy, design, to stop the growth and development of our students. We ask that you release the spermatic word into the atmosphere and the environment, asking that you roll back the spirit of darkness and allow the light of righteousness to saturate our communities. We pray, God, that you heal, deliver, and set free. We implore your divine power and divine authority to complete your divine assignment. And God, we ask that we be in a hurry to hear, slow to anger, slow to speak, and we ask that the peace of God be the umpire that regulates this meeting tonight. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend Shannon. You said exactly my feelings. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, we can call to order. Uh, roll call of members. We have Mr. Durrance, Ms. Radonsky, Mrs. Shute, Mr. Martin, Superintendent Dr. Longshore, Board Attorney Mrs. Nash, and Board Secretary Mrs. Welburn. Um, if I can call on Sherry Perrine. Education Specialist for Heartland for Children to read the Child Abuse Prevention Month Proclamation. Is that the one I'm reading? I'm actually going to be reading that. Help Sherry out. <laughs> okay, so I can go ahead and start reading this. Will you want to say something before I read this? Okay, no problem. Proclamation 2223-11, whereas Florida is committed to improving the lives of all, Floridians and securing a better future for the citizens of this state, and whereas children who have adverse childhood experiences are at higher risk of short and long-term physical, psychological, and behavioral challenges that can impact, impact the individual child and the greater community, and whereas parents and caregivers who have resources and support are better equipped to give their children safe and nurturing experiences, and whereas children have better mental health and physical health and academic success when they are raised in a safe, stable, and nurturing environment, and whereas the Florida Department of Children and Families Secretary? Okay. <laughs> has a vision for holistic services by integrating system and services, and whereas the state of Florida has established Hope Florida, a pathway to prosperity, a personalized approach to helping families overcome barriers to self sufficiency through community collaboration, and whereas Floridians can call 850-300-HOPE to speak with a care navigator for support, develop a plan to achieve economic self-sufficiency referrals to local partners, and help identifying goals and barriers in their lives. And whereas during the month of April, Prevent Child Abuse Florida in collaboration with the Governor's Office of Adoption and Child Protection the Florida Department of Children and Families and the Ounce of Prevention Fund of Florida implements Pinwheels for Prevention, a statewide coordinated campaign to raise awareness of child abuse prevention efforts by teaching about healthy child development and positive parenting practices and establishing circle of parents peer support groups. And whereas Child Abuse Prevention Month provides everyone a chance to learn how they can play a role in preventing abuse and neglect, including adverse childhood experiences, and whereas Child Abuse Prevention Month reminds Floridians of all ages that they can help children increase positive childhood experiences, which lead to happier, healthier childhoods. 
Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the School Board of Highlands County, Florida, do hereby extend my support to all observing April 2023 as Childhood Prevention Month in Florida, adopted this 21st day of March 2023 by the School Board of Highlands County. Thank you for proclaiming April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. We appreciate the involvement of Highlands County in the Pinwheels for Prevention campaign each year. We know that many cities, schools, and county municipalities are displaying pinwheels and talking about what we can all do to strengthen families and keep children safe. Pinwheels for Prevention uses a simple child's toy, a blue and silver pinwheel, to remind us of the happy and healthy childhoods that all children deserve and that we all have a role to play in keeping children safe. Heartland for Children is the managing entity under the Department of Children and Families for Polk, Highlands, and Hardy Counties. We are passionate about child safety and strengthening families through services and resources. The total number of children with open child welfare cases for Polk, Highlands, and Hardy Counties as of March 21st, 2023 is 2,085. The total number of children removed from homes in the Tri-County area due to abuse or neglect for the last fiscal year was 656. The total number of children removed from homes in the Tri-County area due Oh, of that number, I'm sorry, um, so far this year, fiscal year, is 469. Of that number, 228 of these children are from Highlands County. And of that, 228 removed from Highlands County, 95 of these children are placed outside of Highlands County currently. The total number of traditional foster homes in the Tri-County area is 191. <clears throat> Nine of those are here in Highlands County. For the fiscal year 21-22, 223 children were adopted in Circuit 10. We're on track to reach at least that number this fiscal year by already securing forever homes for 109 children. Please visit our adoption gallery on Heartland for Children's website for more information. During the month of April, we encourage you to display pinwheels and share information with others through conversations and social media. We ask that you wear the pinwheel lapel pin you have been provided to help raise awareness. We want our community to understand that together we can have a huge positive impact on the children in our community. Thank you again for your commitment to the children and families in Highlands County. I thank, have some thank you, Sheree, on everything you do for the education specialist for the Heartland for Children yes. on this behalf. Thank you so much. And more. Mm -hmm. And more. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. It's too close to the clean clean Nope. We have an effort. Next, we have our character word, which will be integrity, put on by Highlands Virtual School. We need to go out there, possibly. Y'all here? Okay. Virtual. <laughs> virtual. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I have with me the president and the, on page green, by the way, principal, <laughs> Highlands Virtual School. I have our president of SGA and our vice president of SGA here for Highlands Virtual School, and they just happen to be beautiful sisters, oh. and they're very active in our school. So, Samari and Nisamar, if you want to come on up, they're going to start our little presentation, and then everything will be, as you know, we are in the virtual world, so you will be watching our integrity presentation virtually. Thank you, and actually it's for National Honor Society and National Junior Honor Society. <laughs> so, good evening. I'm Saimari Muniz Hernandez, Vice President of Highlands Virtual School National Honor Society. I am Nesimar Merced Hernandez, President of Highlands Virtual School National Honor Junior Honor Society. We are here to present the character word integrity. Integrity can be defined as the, as the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. Integrity is an important quality of any student, especially a student working remotely like we do. HVS student must have integrity and be honest even when the teacher is not physically present in the room. Please enjoy this video created by NJHS Vice President Briggs Dyer, 
showing some of the ways HBS students show integrity each day in their schoolwork. Integrity is honesty, morality, and being respectful. Integrity is important in online school because you must be on task because your teacher is not there to help you keep you in your room or wherever you are at home. You must be respectful to your teachers. You must be continually doing your schoolwork and not getting up behind. Keeping your grades up. Because it's basically a stepping stone into later on in life. You're online, you don't have too many people watching over you, so you can use that as a precursor to how you can use integrity in your life once you leave school. Okay, Miss Bush, what is integrity? What does it mean to you? So integrity to me means honesty, being responsible, um, making sure that you have um, taken care of everything that you're responsible for, you know, everything you've done on your end, and that you're very honest with others. Okay, why is it important to your student as an online student? Well, in the online world, um, you're not sitting face to face with any adults. Um, you are sitting home working on your own work, and you have to advocate for yourself. You have to make sure that you are communicating with the staff members that you are logging in, completing your lessons, reading your materials, taking your notes, completing your quizzes and your um, written assignments in your labs for um, those classes that have those. And anytime that you're stuck or you're confused, then you have to reach out and make sure that you're getting academic assistance and home room meetings um, to where you can get that assistance that you need. So an online student really needs to have a lot of integrity um, to be successful. Highland Virtual for putting the video. Also want to give recognition to Eric, Mrs. Gooch, who's their assistant principal that's here with us also tonight. Thank you, Mrs. Gooch and Mrs. Green. Okay, Highland's highlights. Yeah. We have some staff that we're going to recognize. So, Miss Ball, if you want to come up and board, if you'll go down, we've got some very special people to recognize tonight. Good evening. We are here to celebrate four individuals who have reached their 35-year milestone with the School Board of Highlands County. Their years of service range from 36 to 37 years. You are truly valued for your contributions and dedication to the organization. As you set your sights on future goals, take a moment to reflect upon your past accomplishments and take pride in knowing that you are an important member of our team. I have asked the school representative to come and say a few words about their employee. As I call the name of each employee, I would like both the employee and the school representative to come up at the same time. When you come up, we're gonna take a picture and then we'd like you to um, shake hands with each of the board members. From Sebring High School, we have Jeffrey Shoemaker with 37 years. <laughs> So it is such an honor to um, be here tonight to uh, celebrate Mr. Shoemaker's 37 years. Um, when I think about Jeff at Sebring High School and especially in his role um, that he's been in for many years as uh, the ninth grade dean, um, I just think about his ability to just have that perfect balance between discipline and relationships with students. And um, the transition from coming from middle school to high school um, can be a hard one. 
and Jeff is just their encourager. He's such a support for them. He builds relationships with them, um, reaches out to parents. I think just his, his relationship with parents just makes the transition a lot smoother. And we talk about it uh, many times at lunch duty when we're sitting out there together over the years about, wow, how far has that child come since the ninth grade? So um, I just appreciate you so much and um, the model that you are to other adults on our campus for um, just encouraging students and supporting them and um, giving them second chances and third chances and so on. So um, thank you for all you do for our school and um, we just appreciate you so much and celebrate you today and thank you for, doing, for putting in 37 years. So um, that's quite a feat. From Woodlawn Elementary School, Katherine Shoemaker with 37 years. Woodlawn's been finally waiting for our turn. I said, ladies, we're going to get to us. We're going to get to us. But it is our honor on behalf of Ms. Gilbert, our assistant principal, and myself, um, principal at Woodlawn, to recognize Kathy Shoemaker. We refer to the Woodlawn Way at Woodlawn, and the two ladies that we have the honor of recognizing tonight, they built the Woodlawn Way. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but both of these ladies we're going to recognize have spent their entire career at Woodlawn Elementary School. One year, that's right, one year, two, two at LPE, and then the, she came to Woodlawn, but then has spent the rest there with us. And... Um, I joke with them all the time, and I'm like, are we doing this right? Is this what we're supposed to be doing? But I will tell you about Kathy. Um, her car is the last one there. I tell her that all the time. I'm like, go home. I have to get on the loudspeaker because she's at the back of the school, so I can't walk all the way back there every night. But I'm like, go home. But she's faithful. She will do anything. She will meet with parents on a Friday at 5 o'clock if that's what they need to serve their students. She shows up for kids. And you know what? I keep saying this, as long as teachers will show up, I'm going to keep showing up. And so I'm grateful for her impact, the way she has loved families. And I'm sure she's seen families come through. We've talked about that now. And so teaching kids of kids that she's had. But I will tell you, we can always depend on Kathy. She's a calm in the storm, peaceful, and she just loves well. And so on behalf of your entire Woodlawn family, we love you, Kathy. This next individual, I had the privilege and honor of working side by side with for seven years. She is an amazing and outstanding educator. Let's welcome Australia Rodriguez from Park Elementary with 37 years. Hello, I'm Blake Germain, the principal at Park Elementary School. As you can see, we color coordinated tonight, too. So that's the first step you have to do. Mr. Wright, you'll learn. <laughs> no, 37 years is a long time to do anything. Um, and Ms. Rodriguez has done it the right way for 37 years. You know, and I think from other administrators that I've talked to in the past, 
um, only great things that they could say about her. Whenever she applied for Park Elementary School um, a few years ago to come there as a pre-K migrant teacher, um, I called around, hey, what do y'all know about Ms. Rodriguez? Oh, she'd be a steal. Take her, take her. Um, everyone, everyone that you, you call, that's what they say, take her. Um, but that's, that's what integrity um, looks like from what HVS was talking about. Integrity um, shows up every single day for students and will do anything that, that we ask her to do every single day. Um, she came in to do pre-K migrant. This year took on a new role as a support facilitator um, for kindergartner first graders and uh, has rocked that out also. So I wish she would stay another five, 10, 15 years, but um, she is retiring at the end of this year. So, um, but she deserves that. She's put in a lot of time and a lot of effort um, into our students here in Highlands County. So for that, we, we really thank her for everything she's done for us. Thank you. Next, we would like to recognize Woodlawn Elementary School again with Jama Hitt, 36 years. It's me again, Jay and Miss Gilbert, assistant principal. And look, if I let you retire, you would have missed this, Jama. Look, I mean, it was worth it to come back. But, oh, I get chills thinking of this lady right here. Um, when I came to Woodlawn Elementary School, I was an Avon Park boy. And so, listen, everyone knows that's a big deal switching to Sebring schools. And so, um, I will tell you, this lady brought me right in, and she loved me like I was born and raised the blue streak. And so, I wear my blue now, I, but I still love Avon Park, too, for those watching online. I, I, I support both of them. My wife's from Ray Placid, so I've got the whole county covered. But let me tell you about Jama Hitt. Um, she loves that. I don't know what else to say. You could put any kid in her room, and she's the child whisperer. With a calming touch and a loving voice, she has touched the lives of hundreds of children at Woodlawn Elementary School over her career. And so um, she said, I want to end in preschool. And so I said, well, well, John and I said, we'll give VPK. So we got VPK, and then we made some switches. Um, and so we lost VPK. But um, it worked out, and I said, please, please, please stay. And, um, and she did. She agreed to extend for us. And I just want to tell you, in this year, because of things that we needed to make Woodlawn Run be in such a large elementary school, she got her reading endorsement this year for me because I needed her to mentor a new teacher. She has taken two interns at this point, mentored a new teacher, took and passed her ESE certification exam for me so she can continue that is Woodlawn Elementary School right there. That's teaching, that's Jama Hit the best. We love her. I'm holding on for two more years. Rick says I'm good. Jama says I'm good. The state says I'm good. So woo! We're just waiting on allocations and then I'll be good. And so Jama Hit on behalf of Christine, on behalf of me, on behalf of so many people at Woodlawn Elementary School who you've touched, we love you, we appreciate you, and we thank you for your service. Let's give these four amazing educators another round of applause.
Love these Highlands highlights. Mm. Oh, thank yes. you. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So. Okay. Um, school board member committee reports. Uh, presentation of petition, comments, concern, or report. First one I have is Corey Wolfenberger on Highlands County Schools accountability. <coughs> Just state your name again for the record. Thank you. She's I had got the right time. <laughs> so I get everything said clearly. All right. My name is Corey Wolfenbarger. Hello, board. My name is Corey Wolfenbarger, and I am a parent of two girls that are in second and fourth grades. I also taught at Fred Wild until October. I am in a special position, having taught at Fred Wild until October and having my children go to school. Currently, I'm homeschooling my children because this school system and board have failed my children and all of the children of Highlands County. Highlands County schools have an average ranking of three out of 10, which is the bottom 50% of Florida public schools. The average math proficiency is 45% and reading is 43%. Not one grade level in the 2021 testing grades, third through 10th, even got to 50% passing overall combined on the FSA scores. Are you proud of this? Do you deserve your salaries when you are failing our children? It starts right here. The curriculum in this county is a joke. Ask the teachers their honest opinions without retribution. I will tell you, m most of them will, will tell you that it's, it's junk. It's like watercolor. You are just brushing over everything that is on the state curriculum, on the boards, what we have to teach. You're not delving into anything at all. These children are failing everything because there's, there's, no, there's no diving deep in mastering these skills. It's just brushing over everything in all curriculums. And it's showing, it's proof in the testing scores that are being had here in Highlands County. This is something that the people in positions making the choices in curriculum should be held accountable for. You board should be firing these people who are failing at their jobs. And if not, you are failing our children and our community. I have gone back and researched on average, Highlands County has not averaged 50% in the last seven years. Clearly something is not working in this school district. Next, administration. I cannot speak on the administration at all the schools. Um, I can, however, speak to that of Fred Wild Elementary. Megan Moksing and Courtney Germain are the principal and vice principal at Fred Wild. I have to say that there is a reason outside of the lack of a good curriculum why Fred Wild is failing so miserably. The reason I left Fred in October was because of my daughter. In fourth grade, she was being bullied and it wasn't a student that was bullying my fourth grader. It was a teacher. I'm sorry, I'm upset. It's very upsetting to me. The administration in that school did nothing in regards to this. And their teacher faced no repercussions. My daughter's education and her mental, mental health were compromised. And that teacher is still there. Nothing happened to her. I was told by Megan Moshing that the teacher lacked good communication skills. My question is, why is she still there teaching if she lacks communication skills? As a teacher, we have to have proper communication skills to be able to communicate with our children and their parents. Recently, a highly qualified and effective teacher has been quit. She quit her job and walked out after 20 years. Highly effective teachers are leaving this school once that would, or they have given everything. This is something that needs to stop. I saw many ex examples of exemplary teachers being treated poorly and ones that, that shouldn't even be in classrooms were being incentivized. Why? How does this happen? I understand that the medium income in Highlands County is 47,000, give or take, as of 2021, which is far less than the majority of other counties in the state of Florida. However, we still deserve the same education as the other 66 counties that are in the state of Florida. 
My children are missing out on a traditional education because of this system, because of the failures in this district. Every student attending this school in Highlands County School District is missing out on the ability to receive a fair and adequate education because of your failures. What are you going to do about this? I would love to talk with any one of you or all of you about this. And I hope more parents will speak out on these failures in our system and hold our elected officials and unelected officials accountable because this cannot be going on any longer. We pay every cent of their, of their salaries. We, the people of Highlands County, and it is not fair. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Wilson. It is not fair that our kids have to suffer because of this. Okay, and the next is... Next petition card is Jesse Sapp. Presentation by Mrs. Mr. Verity on March 7th, 2023. Jesse Sapp. I got something that kind of follows what she was saying. Uh, Mr. Verity had a, a good presentation last, last meeting, um, but he, he showed a, um, I guess it was some kind of a, um, I asked teachers, 469 teachers, questions about if they felt like their opinion was valued. And he, I know everybody kind of puts a positive spin on things when they come here and talk, especially people who are, um, that work for the district. They spin things on a positive note. Uh, he said 72% of those 469 people that were polled thought that 72% of them thought that they were, their opinion was valued, the teachers. And um, he said that was a good number. Well, if you think about it, I, I thought about it from the other standpoint. That's 132 teachers out of the teachers that were polled that didn't feel like their opinions were valued. That's sad. That's a sad number. That's not a good number. And we're working towards that, that number being 100%. Well, when are we going to get there? When, how, when do, how long are we going to wait for that? We've had the same administration in office for uh, at least seven, uh, almost seven years now. When, when, do we, when do we plan on enabling um, those teachers to feel like their opinions are valued. I, I don't know how long we're going to wait. Um, I, I know, um, just like the last person that was standing here, there's, there's a lot of people that feel like that. There's a lot of teachers that feel like that, and there's teachers leaving here at an alarming rate, but we don't know why. We don't go ask them why. But it's like we don't want to know. We do want to know. We want those teachers to stay, and we need them to feel valued. And whatever it takes to do that is what we need to do to do it. 400, 469 people were polled or answered, answered the poll. I wonder how many of those 469 people actually answered without thinking they might, might be retaliated against. And what about the other teachers that didn't answer? I bet more of those teachers that didn't answer would have given uh, a no to that response, as a response to that questionnaire. They just didn't want to cause a stir. Sad. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, next card we have is Larry Overfield. Systemic what? <clears throat> Larry Overfield, CPT. Good evening, school board members, including the new doctor on the school board, Dr. Isaac Durant, Su Superintendent Dr. Longshore, Sleeping Board Attorney <clears throat> Mrs. Nash, and of course, Madam Secretary. Marlene Welburn, and members of the audience. Webster's Dictionary defines systemic as an adjective relating to or common to a system. We hear a lot of talk about systemic racism that is supposed to be common to our society, thus affecting the human race. Frankly, I find it all quite confusing. You see, my understanding is that society is made up of individuals. Just as the parts of a machine make up the unit, so we as individuals make up society. If the parts <coughs> of the machine is dysfunctional, then the machine is. Jesus uses the same analogy in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 29 and 30. If your right eye makes you stumble, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. If your right hand makes you stumble, cut it off and throw it in from you. For it is better for you to lose one of the parts of your body than for your whole body to go into hell. So, 
is not the, the body that makes the eye or the hand dysfunctional, rather it is the way, other way around. It is not the machine that makes the parts dysfunctional, rather it's the other way around. Likewise, it's not society that makes individuals dysfunctional, rather it is the other way around. The only thing that is systemic is our own sin nature, which affects us directly and bears upon society, and we all possess that sin nature. We don't like to hear that, because that makes us responsible and not society. Romans 5.12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sin. But God provides the vaccine in this, Romans 5.15 says, But the free gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one the many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. Then verse 18 says, So then as through one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men, even so through one act of righteousness there resulted justification to all men. The Bible says in Acts 17, 26, and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined, determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation. One de definition of the word race is a people descended from a common ancestor. Isn't that what Acts just said? Genesis 125 says, God made the beasts of the earth after their kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps on the ground after its kind. And God saw that it was good. Genesis 127 says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. Them. If, if we look at Luke chapter 3, verses 23 through 38, we, we see the family line of Jesus. In the final verse, we read, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Our common ancestor then is our creator, God. Not some slime pool, but it was our sin that created a slime pool, or at least the idea of it. We are the direct ancestors of Adam, and we inherited the act, his act of sin, and it became part of our nature. Adam's sin caused the whole of creation to be cursed just as our sin nature curses the whole of society. The only cure is Jesus Christ, not any curriculum, not any philosophy, not any legislation or PhD. Only by putting our trust in Christ as did the thief on the cross. In Luke 23, 42, we read, when he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, truly I say to you, Today, you shall be with me in paradise. Where's your trust? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Overfield. <clears throat> I have a petition card from Lauren Bush. Okay. It's not, it's had to leave. All right. Uh, moving on to super, superintendent's reports. The other petition cards I have are agenda items, and I'll recognize those at that time. Thank you. I just want to welcome everybody back from spring break. I've heard of a lot of different places that some of our students and staff have been able to go to over spring break. So I'm just glad to have everybody back in. We've had a wonderful couple of days getting our students back in the seats. I'd also like to thank Ms. Federico and Ms. Radonsky and Ms. Howerton and our FFA students uh, going up to Tallahassee, making that trip up and being able to have some meetings with some of our legislators and senators and just very thankful for you guys to, to make that trip up. I'd like to have permission to pull item 11CC as it's a duplicate of 11M. Permission to pull 13A, award contract for build out of the weight room at Lake Placid Athletic Complex. That will come before you for consideration after our next athletic task force meeting. And a typographical error correcting Mandy Baxley's last name was made to the March 7th meetings minutes and has been uploaded to the website. We did receive one response to the RUC survey and you received, we received that on March 18th and that's included in your folders. 
And then I would like to invite Ms. Angelica Tenegero to come give us an update on Stock Take Goal 5. Good afternoon, Angelica Business Operations. And today I'll be presenting Goal 5, which is Physical Effectiveness and Efficiency. Um, it involves the operational side of the house, our finance, facilities, food service, transportation, risk management, safety and security departments. So go five, operational and fiscal effectiveness and efficiency. Our goal is to closely examine our operations in all departments for opportunities to streamline, priori prioritize, and identify efficiencies. Our goal consists of four strategies, which is led by each of our directors in those departments I previously mentioned. Um, our strategies are A, to continue emphasize, to emphasize safe and secure environments at our schools and district facilities, to continue to build and maintain facilities and update our transportation fleet to provide quality education and services to our students and staff, um, to provide financial stability, sound fiscal management, and increased operational efficiency to better serve our staff and students, and D, to make financial tr transparency a, fun a top priority and continue to ensure public funds are used efficiently and effectively to meet our district needs. We have two metrics of success. Our first one is to maintain spending and, inst maintain spending and instruction and instructional support functions between 80 and 85 percent of <coughs> our operational spending. And based on our last reporting from DOE, we are at about 91, that's a little hard to read, we're at 91 percent, so we, that one's making, we're making progress. And then to maintain our fund balance at, at least 5 percent, our board of policy states 3 percent. Um, we closed last fiscal year at 6.2. Um, as of January 31st, we were at 7.28. However, we have gotten the latest um, FTE counts and projections from DOE and that is going to decrease. We're still working on the calculations. Um, our family empowerment was 1.3 higher than what we had projected in our budget. So that we're expecting it to decrease about in the mid 5%. Um, our first strategy to continue to emphasize safe and secure environments at our schools and district facilities. To be successful in this strategy, all students and families will feel safe in, our, in, their, will feel safe in their school buildings. They will, our staff will have a comprehensive understanding of safety protocols and procedures that will, that will follow them with fidelity. Um, our activities are to ensure monthly safety drills and protocols, make sure they're conducted every month, and provide reunification training and professional development around safety, ensure completion of our annual FSAP planning, ensure all coaches are cleared and have completed required FHSAA annual certifications, and determine locations in every secondary campuses for vaping devices. Um, we have had um, reunification training for all our admin in December, and Mr. Leesburg is planning to have another one soon in the near future. Um, and also our local sheriff's office and police departments and um, the firefighting, firefighter departments had a, an active shooter training in February at a, one of our high schools as well. Um, we have determined um, our locations for vaping devices at all our secondary campuses. I believe he said there's about 79. We have received three quotes and we will be having a contract coming to you for approval pretty soon in the next couple weeks. Um, strategy B, continue to build and maintain facilities and update our tra transportation fleet to provide quality education and services to our students and staff. To be successful in this strategy, we will have timely com completion of facility projects as intended, continue public trust in our spending of half cent sales tax, and continue to provide safe and reliable bus transportation with updated fleet. Um, our activities are to decrease age of current bus fleet. We currently have 13 buses on order, which we were expected to receive next month, but they have delayed and they said it would be late summer before we get them. And Mr. Hills has notified us as well that for any future order of buses, it's gonna take at least two years to get the buses in. Um, conduct new construction 
to support school expansion. Um, we have, well, there's a few specs still needed to be completed, but our Lake Placid Elementary cafeteria construction is pretty much done. And we have, the board has decided to set us out $2 million every year for the, um, expand, for the wings at Lake Country Elementary and Woodlawn for the future. And we are continuing and constantly updating our capital spending list. There's millions of dollars of projects, so we're, um, we're closely tracking them. Strategy C, provide financial stability, sound fiscal management, and increased operational efficiency to better serve staff and students. To be successful, we will have increased efficiency in the procurement of goods and services across all the departments in the district. Improve overall retention of operations staff and reduce vacancies across the district. We will continue to offer a free employee clinic, which allows the district to use steerage and direct contracting to reduce the cost of services and improve the quality of health care for our employees. And by having an energy consump consumption plan, we will be able to reduce the cost of our utility bills. Um, in food service, we are, ever since COVID, we had to stop because of the supply and demand. We had to discontinue our catering services. That is back on, up in Roland. Um, and he is also working on broadening the a la carte offerings that he's offering at the different schools. Um, in facilities, we have implemented a new work order software. It, it went live Monday, this Monday, and so far it's turning out pretty good. It gives you notifications when it submitted it, who opened it, what, what parts they're ordering, what's the status, and when it's complete, it'll send a notification saying your work order is done. Um, so we just it just still has a little bugs that we need to work on, but we'll get there. And then continue cost avoidance with health cost and energy savings. Decrease the number of student referrals from school buses by increasing bus attendance. Um, our student referrals from school buses have de has decreased about 29% since last year. However, we are having issues hiring school bus drivers and bus attendants, so that's, that's something we're working on as well. And then to account for all FTE funding opportunities to make sure we're receiving all the dollars based on our FTE count. Strategy D, make financial transparency a top priority and continue to ensure public funds are used efficiently and effectively to meet district needs. To be successful, the public board and staff will have an increased understanding of our budgeting process and spending pattern, and there will be a great deal of public trust in our ability to efficiently manage local, state, and federal funds to enhance the learning environment and ensure financial stability. Um, I am currently working with our data scientist, and we will be working on our financial transparency page to make it, you know, make it more user-friendly, easier to read, um, more understandable for the public. Um, we will provide more training and visibility for school-based and district staff around budgets. Um, we recently had a Finance 101 for our administrators, and we had a decent turnout, um, and we will continue to offer those throughout the year. Um, in our Go 5 meeting the other day, Mr. Martin suggested that we have one of those for the public as well. Um, so that is something we'll be scheduling in the near future for the public to you know, explain our financials and the procedures and how the timing of it and how it works. Um, and then to monitor ESSER funds and develop a plan for transition. We have several grants, our second round of ESSER grants um, are, coming, are closing September 20th of this year. Mm -hmm. And then we have our ESSER 3, which are closing next year in September, and we're just trying to dwindle down, making sure we're spending every dollar and making sure we're spending it in the right spot and figuring out how we're going to transition those positions that we're funding out of those grants into our budget for once those, those funds go away. And that was a brief summary of Goal 5. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ms. Tenajero, and thank you for serving on Goal 5, Mr. Martin. I'm glad that you're part of no, that no, team. I, I appreciate, Ms. Angelica, and uh, the willingness. You know, I told her the budget, it's a huge budget. It's very complicated to look at for, mm -hmm. for many people, and uh, I get a lot of calls about it. So sure. um, I asked if she would uh, try to have a meeting so that, you know, she could present how the budgets, um, you know, a lot of it is reconciliation when they're brought before the board. Mm -hmm. Um, and she explained some of that to me, and I thought if we could have a meeting, mm -hmm. um, and 
she could answer questions that it would okay. uh, it would help a lot with the transparency and what people see and, and how the, the budget's being used. It was very well received with our administrators. The 101 finance class that you had just the other day was very well received from that group of individuals. So we look forward to that as well. Thank you again. And that's all my announcements for this right. evening. Um, Madam Chair, I would like to ask just something before we move on too much. Um, we haven't talked about this much. Do we have an update on teachers? Um, I know we keep here, and I haven't uh, in the last couple of meetings. Ms. Ball is here, about so we'll have her come teacher up. Teacher numbers. Um, We've got some really good news to share with you, I think, that uh, from our long-term <clears throat> subs. So I won't steal her thunder. You go right ahead, Ms. Ball. <laughs> So we um, are down to 49 long-term subs, and out of the long-term subs, because we've, we've ranged in the 60s and 70s, we've hired 18 of those as certified teachers, so we're very excited about that. Let's give a big shout-out for that. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> big news. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, and then we ha currently have um, 81 and a half vacancies. We have 34 of those in elementary and 47.5 in secondary. Um, and again, those numbers fluctuate daily. Um, just based on someone leaves or someone gets mm -hmm. hired, um, but that's where we're at with, with 81 vacancies, and then 49 of those are filled with long-term subs. Other positions are still sitting vacant. It could be a resource position. It could be that they have consolidated some of their positions and made eighth hours and just given additional hours to teachers until they can find a qualified individual for that position, but there's a lot of factors that go into that. Do you have any idea how many are going to retire at the end of this year? Have you given any indication? I do not. Um, I don't know if Pam is. No, she does not either at this point. So I know that schools are in the process of um, giving out the letters of uh, their intent of where what their plans are for next year. And one of the questions on there is retirement. So that just has not been communicated to us yet. Okay. Thank you, Ms. How about, Ball. How about our, just our subs, not our long-term subs, just our day-to-day, -day, you know, where are we with the amount of subs? I know, you know, that's always a concern. We need more subs. We need more subs. So um, I don't have the exact numbers for you, but I will tell you we have processed more subs this year than we have in previous years. Okay. Um, but with the vacancies, usually when we process a sub, someone get, grabs them up yeah. for a long-term position, which does not help us in our short-term cool. sure. needs. So okay. it continues to be an okay. issue. I mean, okay. How long is that process from the time someone starts you know, their paperwork to become a sub? It can be a very short time and it can be a very long time because what happens is it really falls a lot on the applicant and that's with any position, not just substitutes. Mm -hmm. So once they apply for the position and we start the process, they have online training they have to do, they mm -hmm. have different requirements they have to meet. So if they are on top of that and they get through it, um, you know, really a, a regular applicant, we could, we've processed some in three to four days We've also processed some in about mm -hmm. six to eight weeks, you know, depending. Stay so it really okay. just depends on how quickly they take the process and they move with it. And it also depends on, you know, we do a background check. So when the fingerprint mm -hmm. results come back, if there's criminal history, that could delay it. Mm -hmm. um, when we do the drug testing, if anything gets flagged, depending on the types of medications they're on, that can delay it. So it really just varies based right. on each individual situation. Okay. And do we give them a, like a courtesy phone call to let them know? Yes. Hey, make sure you're staying on your emails. Mm -hmm. make sure you know. So so we do the emails. We have this year, we have started copying administrators on those emails okay. as well. Okay. So if they're assigned to a school, administrators are able to follow up with them and stay on top of it as well. Okay. And they get reminders through the system itself mm -hmm. that they have to forms do. that are outstanding. Yeah. So. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, Ms. Ball. Um, I, not for Ms. Ball. I did just had one other thing to, to ask about. But maybe, um, I don't know if it'd be Ms. Connor or Ms. Irwin, but we're in, are we in the process of testing? Are we finishing testing to know where student performance? I just, I don't think in the last few meetings we've talked much about under yeah, the superintendent. Right. Mm -hmm. The work, it was just, workshop was just, just, just the three of us. Mm -hmm. That was where. The oh, two, I think the two were out. All right. So, Mr. Martin, we did do a workshop that evening, that evening that you were out. And so they can give you an update on that for sure from the workshop. Okay. But in May, we'll actually start the next round of testing. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. 
Moving on to adopting the agenda as revised. I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda as revised. I'll second. We okay, have a motion by Mrs. Shoup and a second by Mr. Durrance. Calling for the question, Mrs. Weldon. Yes. 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 Okay, moving on to consent agenda. Agenda. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Durrance and a second by Mrs. Shoup. Open it to the public for comment. Bring it back to the board. I just would like to thank the um, child abuse mm -hmm. folks for coming today. Um, I think she has already left, but we appreciate them taking the time and and um, cannot think of a worthier cause. And I, I want to say on April the 1st on the circle is a, um, I don't know what you want, a, a, maybe a presentation of all the different um, organizations that are involved with children and um, be setting up booths and that kind of stuff. So if anyone out there has an organization that they're active in, it's a good time to, to um, show your support. Is that all day on April 1st? I, I, it starts at 9 o'clock. I don't know how long it's going, but it's on the circle. And I, I'm with the Boys and Girls Club on the board, and we will be there. I don't know how long it all goes. I just know 9 o'clock I can be there, but I can't be there all day, so I really didn't okay. look to see, to be honest with you. Thank you. Okay. Only for the question, Mrs. Welborn. Didn't I have a Mr. Durham? Yeah, yeah, Mr. Durham. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. 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 No problem. Um, we're on to item action items 9A. Consider approval of the superintendent's recommendation for personnel. I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Radonsky and a second by Mrs. Shu. Open to the public for comment. I'm going to get a question by Jeff. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Can I ask questions? Oh, yes. Comment. <laughs> uh, did I read this right? Mike's resigning. Yes. Yes, he's, oh, he's retired. <laughs> not retired. Retired. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, that's yeah, a different actually. situation. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. Since he came back as a consultant, he had to resign. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> back to the board for comment. Mrs. Wellborn. Yes. 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 Consider approval of expulsions. Make a motion to approve. Second. I have a motion by Mrs. Shoup and a second by Mr. Durrance. Mrs. Welburn. Yes. 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 Moving on to item action item 9C. Consider approval of E-rate proposal of services for Highlands Career Institute to be awarded to Comcast. RFP 750E-23A.11. Make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Durrance and a second by Mrs. Shoup. Open to the public for comment. Bring it back to the board for discussion. Okay, Mrs. Welburn. Mr. Durrance? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mrs. Shoup? Oh, sorry. I apologize. <laughs> it was Mrs. Shoup. Yes. 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 We're glad you're. We're, we're glad you're at back. this one. They did a great job, but we're glad you're back. <laughs> okay. On to uh, action policies. Eleven. Consider approval of adoption. Oh, this is where I'm going to turn this over to you, Mrs. Nash. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chair. Um, in front of you all today, you have, um, I think it's around 37 different policies. You'll see them as items 11A through 11, through 11KK. Um, Ms. Wellborn, have, has there been publications, the appropriate publications? Okay. These are all in front of you today for final adoption. 
if any of you have any questions or need a recap on any of them, please let me know. I'm happy to do that. Do have anyone they want to address? I think we've gone through about our third time. The, yes. The one that I quit, it was changed. The one. It was duplicated. Oh, I sent you the text. Um, it was the verbiage. Yes, the one we do. I don't remember. Yeah. Yes, the that pronouns. Was, that was on consent. Okay. On Got you. That was on uh, the second. And we called it. All right, thank you. And I know it's all final and I'm, you know, but just something maybe down the road for us to take a look at later on. And I, there's a lot of policies. We were gone <laughs> all, basically all week um, <clears throat> last week. So there were a few that I wanted. I just did not have enough time to reach out to some people and talk. Something to kind of throw out for the board to maybe think about, but I want to get um, with more of high school people is on that. Um, it's the wireless communication devices, 5136. And just maybe down the road for us to think about looking at, you know, where it talks about high school students may use their um, communication devices before and after school, during their lunch break, in between classes. That was kind of my, just for... Maybe get some teachers input on that in school. Do we have any still here? Well, Administration. I, I will just share with you that I questioned that several years ago when Ann Lindsay was still at Seaburn High School. And she said there is no way that they can control during changing classes if the students are on their phones. So if you say they can't do it, there's no way they can keep so I'm, I'm just throwing that in yeah. it, you know, when they're in the hallways. Because I, I thought, you know, that's a good way to bump into people to if someone is, you know. Right. But um, she said there's no way they can, they can control it. They can stop it. And um, so I'll just share that a little bit with yeah. you. High school is probably going to be a lot harder. Um, I know middle school, Mr. Ward down there has said that, you know, if he sees the phones, in between he takes them That's what, yeah. and they yeah, can get it so you know it's a it's a policy he hasn't adopted said it's working well um to cut down on a lot of that so well and that is the policy at the middle school you know their mm -hmm. phones are often in their backpack so, period mm -hmm. from yeah. you know start to end so and that's why i said you know but i i do know you know phones are an issue and it's a whole plethora of things that come along with it um I've never worked at the high school, so that's why I said I'd like, you know, to maybe have a little more time to discuss um, that one down the road if it's something that teachers, but you know what, maybe at the high school level, it doesn't bother them at all. It may not, mm -hmm. and that's okay, some, you know. Feedback of the code of student conduct, you know. Just we do them. have yeah. some high school teachers here. <laughs> <laughs> I see them. <laughs> so maybe just a little discussion. So yeah, I, I would be... But I do like also too. understand the aspect of then you're disciplining for them not following, and then it creates a snowball effect of that mm -hmm. as well. For sure. So, in a whole. So, I get that. Okay. I don't think I have a motion yet, do I? Not yet. I just, I just so, think I've like, turned it over. Just We need to what? So We're going to do it as revised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to that. <laughs> and I'll second that. I have a motion by Mrs. Shoup and a second by Mr. Durrance. Open to the public for comment. Bring it back to the board. Just one more minute. I'm Something I haven't run into. I didn't know what the New World's Reading Scholarship Account Services is. Uh, it's a, a grant or something. I don't know exactly what that is. I I've run into a lot of things in this district. I've never heard of that. So it's just something that Ms. it's Carter, under the yeah. tutoring policy. I just wasn't Ms. sure what that can was. Speak to that for you. Yeah. yeah. It's a newer initiative, and kids qualify for it based on their previous test scores, and they receive um, 
notification mm -hmm. in the mail and from schools that they qualify for it and they receive books in the mail um, based on children's preferences. So we started that last year. It's something that the University of Florida started and um, we've continued that on. So okay. that's what it is. Just had we don't want so. okay. them to pass up that opportunity to get books okay. in the mail at home yeah. too. So it's been okay. good so far. All right. so. Thank you. Is that good? Yeah, I just <laughs> never ran into that one, so okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Welburn? Yes. 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 And then we need to finish. Was that? That was, was included in everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to be sure I heard right. Okay. Next, we have item 12A consider approval of out of state travel, West Texas A&M University Veterinary Science Certificate Program, June 26th through June 29th, 2023. Uh, West Texas A&M University, Canyon, Texas, and we have Mrs. Ms. Megan Foster here. She, she come up and just share a little bit. She's handed uh, uh, each board member um, a handout on it. Kind of. Hello, I'm Megan Foster. I'm the vet assisting teacher at Avon Park High School. I'm here to talk to you about an upcoming summer conference at West Texas A&M. Um, it's specifically for vet educators, which I think is super cool. We don't have a lot of that in Florida, let alone um, vet programs in Florida. So that's why it's at West Texas. And I don't think they've had one there before. So this is the first one. Um, but with your approval, I would love to attend this conference. That way I can collaborate and ne network with teachers that teach the same subject area and bring back um, even better curriculum to Avon Park High School. Thank you for coming, Sharon, and giving yeah. us this. Yeah, mm -hmm. had such a great program of, in a growing mm -hmm. program. Yes, yeah, so we're I, super proud of it. Yeah, I would like to say um, a wonderful program, and um, and I thank you for looking at the agenda, how detailed it was, um, mm -hmm. and what you put into as far as what your plans were and expenses. Um, we appreciate you doing that and. I'm assuming looking at this now, you, you made a choice. I know you were looking at Orlando and Fort Myers from an airport. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, I just, I love the Fort Myers airport. It's just Much it's small and they're really nice. It's just. No, I, I <laughs> been through it many, yes. I don't blame you and I'm glad you made that choice that was easier and convenient for you. But. Is there any more questions? Um, and, and I know that. <clears throat> Vets are in high demand. They um, are. So for you to be able to grow that and offer that to our kids is important. They so, are. I've been completing an internship at Ocam Animal Hospital, and I've almost completed 250 hours there. So awesome. It's, awesome. it's awesome to see behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah. And an awesome plug for Temple Grandin. Yeah, exciting. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I just was looking at that. So there was a movie these. about her. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, yeah, so I was just reading through that, and um, so... Have, we haven't made a motion on this yet, no. have we? Mm -hmm. I, I would like to make a motion um, on 12A. I'll oh. second. Okay. We have a motion by Ms. Shoup and a second by Ms. Brodowski. Open to the public for comment. Bring it back to the board again. Ms. Bellman, call for the question. Yes, Ms. Shoup. Yes. Ms. Brodowski. Yes. Ms. Yes. Mr. Martin. Yes. And the chair. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Thank Boston. you. And what a great Safe opportunity travels. to hear mm -hmm. from her. Yeah, yes. for sure. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Next, we have item 12B, and is to consider public comment of the relationships under construction curriculum. And um, I do have two petition cards in regards to that. And just, just for the presenters that are coming up, this is just in regards to the public comment. Is Mr. Clare? Earl Clare from Lake Placid, and uh, I uh, unfortunately I didn't read the, the comments that were in, but I just wanted to speak, put in a word in favor of RDC, and I would hope that you would adopt it unanimously. It's been a long haul, lots of hours, lots of citizens, but let's get it done. Thank you, Mr. Thank Clare. You. Next, I have Amanda Smith. Okay. So do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. 
Second. I have a motion by Mr. Durrance and a second by Mrs. Shoup. Open to the public for comment. Got two walking up at the same time. Now, this is just in regards to the public comment. Are, are you considering? We're not voting on it. We're, we just, we're just acting on consider the public comment. So we're not voting on it. Okay. I, I'm, I'm in favor of the RUC, not the, not the leading up to the RUC, but the portions that was, that was approved for the RUC. I am in favor of that. The, okay. This has been a year. Thank you, Mr. Am I allowed to do my public comment or no? Well, if you're going to talk about the public comment in relation under the RUC, you're able to say. But if you're going to go, you know, that that's not what the agenda item is tonight. Maybe I'm confused then. Okay. Let's consider public comment of RUC curriculum. Ms. Bush. Good evening, Lauren Bush, committee um, committee member, health committee member. Um, I glanced over the posted RUC um, slides. They have been culled, it appears, um, from what we were presented. Um, my concern would be um, what now, there's still a lot of missing information. What is the, is that the full curriculum? What is the rest of the curriculum? Are there worksheets? Are there other components of, with that curriculum that's gonna be given? Um, have we set a precedent that would inhibit, well, we won't. I'll yeah, I was going to say, this is just for the public. This is just okay, so to address a public comment. It still appears that we're going after 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. And I've had conflicting, multiple conflicting messages um, that I will hear. Was this something you saw in the public comments, or did you make a public comment? I've emailed Danielle Irwin. I've talked to attorneys. Did you make a public comment? This is just in regards to the public comment. So you're telling me I need to submit a public comment in order to speak tonight? Is we're not. That what actually, we're not acting on the RUC. Yeah. Is I what understand. I'm trying to tell you. So that's what. So that I'm just trying to stick to the agenda item. Okay. I did not submit a an official public comment in any forum process submission because you changed the rules. So I apologize if I'm taking up. Okay, and now back to the board for discussion. Okay, Mrs. Welburn. Yes. 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 Okay, next item 13B re request approval of audit report for 2021 22. I don't know if Angelica was going to speak on that. Right now. Oh, did I forget 13? But it was full. Okay. That's okay. Yes. <laughs> That's me. That's okay. It was, Ms. It was, I just, She'll, she's available for questions he, if yeah, there's yeah, any anyway. questions on the audit. Anyone have any? Well, we'll go ahead and get a motion in a second, and then we'll open it to the public for comment. Make a motion. Second. Okay. Open to the public for comment. Yes, sir. I'm Mark Valero from Sebring. I just glanced at both of the audits very quickly. The internal one with the uh, expenses or the purchases at the schools, it mentioned that there were some uh, purchases that did not directly benefit students. It didn't go into detail about what school or what the purchases were or what, you know, what were allowed. I know there's probably some gray areas where Maybe a new administrator might believe that a purchase is benefiting students, but doesn't. But I didn't read the full detail of the whole audit, but just the findings. So I was just wondering if anybody could speak to that. Sure. Angelica. Angelica, Business Operations. Um, I don't have the exact the exact findings per school, but I believe the ones you're talking to is um, the ex the ex purchases from general the general account. Um, in our red book, it states that any any purchases made out of the whatever whatever money is in their general account is supposed to be used to benefit the whole student body. So, for instance, if they had a 
if they were buying calculators for the whole school, they can use the funds in their general fund account and in their internal accounts to buy calculators for the, school, the whole school. But if there was a particular student who was needing school supplies, um, they couldn't use, they cannot use those funds for just a particular student. It has to be to benefit the whole student body. So there were some instances in some of the schools where they used those funds for just a particular, a particular person, not for the whole student body. And that's why it was a finding, because they shouldn't have used funds from those accounts for that purchase. It should have been made out of a different account. Um, and if you need, if you would like further detail, I do have it. I don't, I don't have it with me tonight, but we could provide the actual findings at the school of what the purchase was. Thank you. Any other comments from the public in regards to the audit report? Okay, back to the board. Mrs. Okay. Welburn? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Item 13C, request approval of internal accounts, audit for June 30th, 2022. I'll make a motion. We'll second. Okay, a motion by Mr. Durance and a second by Mr. Martin. Open to the public for comment. Back to the board. Mrs. Welburn, call for the question. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Chair votes yes. Okay, um, moving on to HCA, HCSPA member comments. <laughs> Jean Tedarico, president of HCEA. I had quite an introduction last week to politics in Tallahassee. I'm still not sure how I feel about everything, but I went up there and basically tried to make sure that they were hearing from small counties and not just the really big counties. My challenge to you, though, is how are y'all doing on getting out to the schools? You know, I gave you that challenge to spend a full day subbing or at least shadowing a teacher grade some papers. Have, how are we doing on that? Because I'm not going to quit bugging you on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was good seeing you there also. Mm -hmm. School board attorney comments? Oh, okay. My normal quiet self. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Board member comments, Mr. Martin? Um, yeah, first like to uh, thank the Highlands Virtual um, the presentation on integrity always I'm sure we're all going to appreciate hearing from from the students um, all the teachers uh, wish we had a lot more than 37 years long time to spend there we appreciate that um, glad to have madam secretary back and healthy um, and outside of that I'm looking out and I see the daylight and it's really throwing me off <laughs> right now with this new time so it's five o'clock I'm looking at all these clocks <laughs> <laughs> they're all, they're all, the clocks are different we're not even right any of them yeah nothing's right there so, we and need to put batteries into the budget <laughs> <laughs> thank those in the community appreciate you being here as well Mr. Durrance. Okay, a couple of important dates. I know April 13th will be the Sebring Chamber of Commerce. We'll have their scholarship luncheon. I think all of our chambers do scholarship luncheons, and I appreciate it. I don't have the dates for the other two, but that's the one for Sebring. And uh, they do a lot for our students and appreciate all that they do and, um, and our community does to make that happen. Uh, May 5th will be the second grade immigration simulation at Mark Memorial Elementary School. I think some of you are going to be there. And I think Avon usually has theirs, so if you have that information, pass that on to me, and I'll certainly volunteer for that. Um, I'm, my wife and I are going to donate $200 each uh, for Teacher Appreciation Week. It's at May uh, 8th or 12th for at least the schools are in District 1, Avon Park Middle School, Avon Park High School, Park Elementary School, and Avon Elementary School. So as part of that, I'll be uh, blocking part of my time to go to each four of those schools. Uh, when I'm doing my check, I'll just stay there for, you know, half day and do some time. And, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, the whole day, one class? Yeah, one class all day. I'll try. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I know that life. <laughs> but uh, thank you. That's it. I appreciate, appreciate everyone that can donate for Teacher Appreciation Day week, if that's something that uh, you can do each school that needs it. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Durant. Ms. Um, I 
promised Avon um, Elementary that I'd give them a good little shout out because I was able to judge at their Tropicana speech contest. And um, I told them they'll, they will have a lot of middle school uh, teachers that will be excited to get them because they're great little writers. And I know how hard it is to uh, help those students along with writing their speeches. So I was very impressed. Um, but more importantly, I was very impressed with the behavior of all the students that were watching them. And so that was um, really neat to see that. So I made sure um, that I told them I was going to give them a, a special little shout out. And I'll be judging at Cracker Trail coming up soon. So um, back to my language arts days. And I have loved it. Special Stars was unbelievable. Those smiling faces was made my entire year. Um, reminds us of why we do what we do. And I was able to get over to Sebring High School. I don't know if anybody has left from Sebring High and see their chalk walk. And that was impressive. Yes, um, I saw some those stuff kids. on Facebook. It's and, always interesting. Yeah, able to just get out. A lot of them were sunburnt. <laughs> you know, the top from, but um, so just those are the things that you remember. And um, so it was nice to be able to get there and see that, see lots of my old students as well. Um, I too was in awe and, you know, kind of starstruck at the leg legislative days and, and um, excited to be a part of that and mm -hmm. same thing. I don't know what to make of all of that, but it sure was neat. Mm -hmm. And our local representatives gave us time and they did hear from us, so to let the community know. And they will continue to hear from us. Um, and so as a board member, I do want to hear from our community and, um, you know, I do want to share concerns and help to make things as best as, as I can for our kids and for our district. And so I enjoyed my time there. I learned a lot um, at part two of the board member training. And I am um, still kind of collecting my thoughts and organizing some things. But there definitely are some things that I want to bring back to our board and be able to kind of discuss and see, you know, maybe are, are there some ways that we can look at things and um, maybe do things a little bit differently to help. And um, I just, I, I do want to kind of circle back around to our, that, that five hours of our, our resiliency um, training and just kind of throw it back out to the board um, for everybody to just kind of think about and maybe get thoughts as a board, you know, and if we do need to look at a policy that um, is, you know, maybe not as clear as it should be, or um, do we need to make changes to that policy as a board, just knowing where we, where we were and what happened. Um, and I know two of us weren't sitting on, on the board when, you know, things, but the, everybody as a board did, you know, say, my goodness, and we want to make sure that things don't happen again and that we don't, that we do know. Um, so I don't know if it's as a board we want to kind of look at maybe having a little bit more oversight just on that piece. Um, just something to think through and um, just kind of throwing it out there because all our middle school students and our high school students do, do see that or they have the opportunity to. And so making sure that we are um, implementing that in the best manner possible and utilizing, I know this year we're in a little time crunch, and so I understand, and I know they're still, I think Ms. Blackman is still here. I know, you know, they're continuing to work on, you know, making it, but do we as a board want to look at, that might be a piece that we do want to have a little bit of, because it does come back to us if there's something, um, you know, so just a, a thought on that. Um, and one more thing to throw out, out, out as a board, um, is the idea of maybe like some type of a survey that comes to board members for so that we can hear our from our teachers and our parents and our faculty and our staff and things and um, that it maybe can come to us so i don't know if as a board we could maybe discuss some feedback that we might want to hear and would it be would it be different if I, you know and i don't know but i'm just Throw in some things out um, for us to make sure that we're doing the best we can, too. So just some things to think about. And I don't know how all that looks. <laughs> Ms. Shute? 
Um, first of all, I want to um, just say congratulations to the teachers who were here and recognized. Um, 36 and 37 years, it's, it's a long time to be doing the same thing day in and day out. So um, we appreciate all of them. Um, and also to the Highlands Virtual School, I'm not sure if anyone is here still, but um, the two ladies did a very nice job in the, I think I already said this, but the with the child abuse, um, I can't think of too many things that are more important than protecting our children in that situation. Um, and then I would also just want to say, usually I am in Tallahassee for mm -hmm. the um, with the school boards, but um, this year I was in Brunswick, Georgia, and I have a new grandbaby. She was born on Monday, and um, so that that yeah, it sure did. It sure did with no no questions, and um, so um, everyone is doing very well. So I just want to throw that out there. All right, and I just I was going to congratulate you. Oh, okay. she's, she's beautiful. <laughs> yes, she is. And her of name course. is Mackenzie Grace. Isn't that beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so what, I hope mom and dad and sister are doing well, good. I am heading back up there tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, she right. asked for help, and I figured yeah, hey, I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll be <laughs> there. I can. The grandparents do. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to thank Highlands Virtual School on their presentation tonight. Um, look forward to, to seeing those and also the recognitions of our teachers for their years of, mm -hmm. of service. Um, and thank Angelica for her uh, presentation on, yeah. always turn it around, stock take or take stock. <laughs> <laughs> stock it is take, a tough one, you have to think about that. Stock take, so uh, <laughs> thank you for the presentation on that. Um, what I was kind of excited was to hear the process of the work orders. Uh, that's mm -hmm. going to be a good... Um, Feedback. I'm sure Mr. Brown will appreciate that. <laughs> so. And um, I also want to um, say, a, I think we have done what Mrs. Radonsky has said in the past um, and kind of getting some feedback from the teachers. You also have the window of the school reports that are done, the individual school reports, and their, their feedback there that we can come in and sit down and look at also, so uh, that, that is another process. And I just also wanna say that, um, that there are things on the agenda that we are, we are acting on and there is gonna be a window for, for addressing certain things that when it, when it comes up tonight, we were, I, just to keep the board meeting going in a timely manner, that will allow them when we're addressing that item to bring their concerns to us. So with that, I will call this meeting adjourned.